Oh, hello. Welcome to another Today is Decay. Are we celebrating births and beginnings of everything important since the dawn of time? It's January 16th, and here are all the dates that really rate. Right. On this day in 1901, Marcel Delgado was born. So I'm just reading up on some King Kong here because uh, he was one of the animators that worked with Willis O'Brien and uh, might have actually contributed a lot more um, uh, to the project and, and Willis O'Brien's career than uh, was officially recorded. It's really interesting, I think, actually. I feel like growing up, I uh, always kind of, um, I don't know if I idolized, but I definitely read so many uh, articles uh, talking about Willis O'Brien. And uh, in more recent years, um, well, I mean, for a while, Marcel Delgado was like a, a afterthought. Um, but then there's also Herbert Dolly, who maybe created a lot of the techniques that Willis O'Brien then used for the rest of his career. I don't know. So, you know, when you really peel the, the layers back, how much was Willis O'Brien really contributing? I don't, I don't know. We did a whole Phantom Creep stage play once years ago on the um, unfinished projects of Willis O'Brien uh, and as it related to his uh, tragic life, or the tragic life of his family. And uh, in hindsight, I don't know how much of it is accurate. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Who knows? But look at this, isn't this awesome? Yeah, this is a 1933 movie program. Really good stuff. I love King Kong. It's hard to say just whose soul was animating this creature. Uh, the way we presented it in our stage play was that, because what happened was for Willis O'Brien's life, um, uh, in between King Kong and Son of Kong came out like a year and a half apart, basically. And King Kong was O'Brien's most uh, successful accomplishment. <clears throat> and, um, Shortly thereafter, uh, his wife went nuts and shot and killed both of their young children, and I believe then killed herself. And if you think about the process of stop motion animation, he just closed the door and escaped into the world of Skull Island and creating this fantasy. And uh, what a unbelievable uh, loss, and yet the pathos, the heart, the uh, soul of King Kong is like right there. And I feel like I've always felt like it was very palpable that like this wasn't Ray Harryhausen, who's much more of a, a technician. Uh, there's there's soul, like I said, in, in Willis O'Brien's work. And what complicates that story that was part of what our stage play was. Um, uh, what complicates that story is that actually a lot of the work may have been done by Marcelo Delgado. Um, yeah, an, an unsung artist. So was he the one who was really uh, internalizing these pains and, and putting it into his work? I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's my King Kong spiel. What else? John Carpenter, born today, 1948. I don't have to say anything about him. He's the best. Uh, I do think that the first, and you could say the second, because I feel like it's just more of the same wonderful stuff, uh, Halloween films, is a really intelligent um, adaptation of the Val Luton school of like, don't show the monster show darkness and have the audience uh, project their worst fears on like a blank slate. And whether you want to say that's like the shape face or like, like the darkness of Haddonfield, it all, it all works. It, genius. And that's just, you know, one of his uh, productions. Anyway, what else? 
Carol Monroe, born then, 49. Uh, wonderful actress, yeah. All sorts of great stuff. Dr. Fives, Sinbad, um, plenty. The film Face Behind the Mask, premiered in 1941. That's why we're here with the Peter Lorre section of the place. Uh, you've got some Face Behind the Mask lobby cards up yonder. This is a really fun film. Uh, Peter Lorre and like what's basically like a B, like a, a, a programmer, um, which is like a gangster movie, but also like borderline a horror movie, nice. I'd say. Uh, and there's this really great moment early on in the film when he's on the boat on his way to America, where I think somebody's like, either he's drunk or somebody he's with is drunk and like bumps into him and he almost knocks his like passport or paperwork over the side of the uh the boat and uh i i don't know for some reason i've always just kind of connected peter Lorre with my paternal grandfather and um uh, my grandfather came over uh from like during world war ii like as world war ii was first declared uh like on his own um and somehow lost his paperwork over the side of the boat and wound up having to stick around in Ellis Island and try to wire for like replacement paperwork to like get into the country. And like, meanwhile, this is like, you know, Nazi times and how is this possible? I don't know. And so here was this Peter Lorre film where like the same thing almost happens. I don't know. <laughs> I always just, it just like further cemented this connection I have with uh, my grandpa and Peter Lorre. What can I say? Anyway, that's it. Uh, yeah, and uh, I didn't do this year or last year, so I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm quickly filling in the gaps for any of the days that I might have missed previously. Anyway, that's it. The whole day from me to you. Till tomorrow. Goodbye.